Last year we visited a beach in Oregon. There was a couple playing with bubbles. They had a hoop about more than a foot in diameter that they placed in some soap solution and then they held it up to the wind. And these enormous multicolored bubbles would come out, 10, 15 feet long. And then they disappear. And so they make another one, and then another one. All the time fascinated with the bubbles. Our thought worlds are like that. Our bodies like the hoop. And there's a little film, and some wind comes in, blowing in from who knows where. And our thoughts take on shape, and we try to live in the thoughts. The problem is that they're like bubbles. They can last only for so long, but then they disintegrate. But then we make more, and we make more. And unlike the couple with their bubble maker, we never get tired of our thoughts. Our opinions about a lot of things are no more substantial than the bubbles. There's so many theories now, say, about the election that just happened. And does anyone really know what happened? No. Nope. And yet they have very strong opinions. And who knows what's going to happen as a result of their strong and clashing opinions. But if you can see them as being like the bubbles, and saying, the bubbles are not the issue. That's not the important thing, it's the hoop, the body we've got here, breathing with all the different elements of earth, water, wind, and fire. And if we can learn how to stay there, and not go following any bubbles that come through, we're going to be a lot safer. At the very least, we're not going to cause ourselves a lot of delusion and greed and aversion. And we'd be less likely to get involved in any struggles and conflicts to go around these things. Conflict, the Buddha said, comes from the process of what he calls babancha. It's a hard term to tra translate. Some people like proliferation, but it's not so much the proliferation of thoughts. It's the type of thoughts, the thoughts that start with the conceit, I am, I am the thinker. And from that self-view, all the issues about that thinker and the thinker's needs just begin to spread out. And it's because of those, that kind of thinking, thinking in those terms that we get involved in conflict. I tend to translate the term as objectification. You turn yourself into an object first, and then you look for other objects outside. You look for things to feed on. Because after all, as you become the thinker, you're a being. Wherever there's the attachment of a being, then the being has to feed in order to keep that identification going. And where you feed, either in terms of physical food or mental food, other people are also trying to feed. It's as if we're all on the beach with our hoops making bubbles, and if the bubbles interact, they tend to burst. And, and Some of them destroy other ones. You want to keep your hoop out of the bubble solution. And if bubbles do form, you don't have to follow them. After all, the Buddha doesn't say we don't think at all. Just don't go inhabiting your thought worlds. And have some control over your thoughts. And watch out for the thoughts that tend to get involved in conflict, the thoughts that begin with, I am the thinker. So what kind of thoughts would not get involved with that? Well, thoughts about where is the stress? What's causing the stress? What can I do to put an end to that cause? Or what can be done to put an end to that cause? Think in those terms, you're on the path, engaged in what the Buddha calls appropriate attention. You're asking the right questions, and you're asking them, framing them in the right way. 
so we can get some useful answers. But if you're not sure about your thinking, you head back to the hoop. This body right here. And learn how to inhabit it thoroughly. Learn how to be in the feet, be in the hands, be in the head, be in the torso, be in all parts of the body. A lot of us, because the eyes are up in the head and all the, a lot of the sensory organs are in the head, tend to think of ourselves as being in the head. And then from the head we look at the other parts of the body. But that's unstable. It's a lot more stable if you are aware of the hand, in the hand. If you're in the arm, aware of the arm, in the shoulder, aware of the shoulder. All the different parts of the body. Be in them. And you can thoroughly inhabit the body like this. Then you're a lot more grounded in the present moment. And any winds that come along tend not to create bubbles. So get to know this territory really well. Inhabit it thoroughly. And use the Buddha's analysis of the different kinds of elements. That helps helps you see where there's an imbalance. In the West, our vocabulary for describing the body as is felt from within is really, really impoverished. So we can borrow the Buddha's vocabulary. Earth, the solid parts, the heavy parts. Water, the liquid parts, the cool parts. Fire, of course, would be the warm parts. Wind is the different ways in which energy flows to the body, primarily the in and out breath, but also there are other winds in the different parts of the body. Learn to think in these terms. So when you try to settle down in the body and things don't seem quite right, you can ask yourself what's out of balance. Because you want to be kind of like Goldilocks porridge, not too hot, not too cold, not too heavy, not too light. A place where it feels really good to stay, where it feels natural to stay, where you feel that you really come back home. And then when you're grounded like this, you get a better sense of when is an appropriate time to think and when is an appropriate time not to think. What are good issues to have opinions about and what are other issues where you know that you don't really know. And so there's no need for an opinion. That, for me, was one of the more liberating parts about going over to Thailand and staying with the John Fu, realizing that there were a lot of issues that I didn't need to have an opinion about anymore. I've been raised in an environment where you were supposed to have an opinion about everything, every, any topic that came up. You're supposed to have an opinion ready. And if you didn't, you were looked down on. But over there, studying with the John Fung, having opinions about things we didn't really know was not regarded as a virtue. I think that's wise. You can avoid a lot of problems that way. And it gives the mind more time to be by itself, to be with the body. not get blown around. So try to keep the mind grounded in both senses of the term. Like the teenager who has been traveling around too much and getting into trouble, you've got to ground the teenager. And then ground it in the sense of feeling really solid, at home, at ease. Stable. That's the kind of quality we're trying to develop. You want a stable mind. And the body is the foundation in which that mind can rest. So do your best to get familiar here. And as for 
the bubbles that may come up, either yours or other people's, and just let them blow past. You're a lot safer that way. <laughs>